A huge rift in the sky appears, looking like a black hole, commonly called a gateway. These strange rifts have shown up suddenly all over the world, causing chaos and fear among people. Monsters burst out from these gates a green-skinned orc with a savage grin, along with red-skinned demons. These creatures attack the inhabitants, turning the streets into battle zones. Urban areas, now filled with these fiends, have been blocked off and marked as danger zones. The whole region seems destroyed, with monsters roaming freely through the ruins. One's footsteps boldly step into dangerous territory, marking the start of a fight. This is the beginning for those ready to face the growing threat. A red-haired girl, full of determination, rallies her friends, urging them to use all their strength to defeat the enemies. She speaks with strong confidence, lifting the team's spirits. However, only people with special abilities can hunt monsters effectively. These unique individuals are called hunters and are humanity's light of hope for salvation. A group of hunters appears, each ready to show off their skills in battle, one of them. The girl with a fiery gaze and a shining sword shouts for an attack, inspiring confidence in her friends. She finds herself in the spotlight, determined to lead the hunters into battle. Facing the huge monster without fear, she grips her burning sword tightly. Her strength instills fear in her enemies while boosting confidence in her allies. This girl, filled with blazing magic, boldly states that she can handle this threat alone. Her words, along with her fierce facial expression, show that she has no plans of backing down. However, the battle ahead will test her resolve. However, as she attacks, swing her weapon with force and shouting, turn to ashes, her determination becomes clear in the tense expression on her face. Bright tongues of fire dance around her sword, and she continues her onslaught, shouting the incantation, Scarlet Sword of the Flame King. Her fiery strike lands on two orcs, instantly engulfing them in flames and marking the power of her attack. One of the monsters, hit directly by her spell, screams in agony because the flames consume its body, piercing it from within and tearing the creature apart. As the young man observes, he is captivated by the spectacle unfolding before him. His expression reveals astonishment and admiration. Incredible, he remarks, realizing the formidable prowess of the huntress. Fire magic coalesces around her foot, and the girl prepares to launch another strike. Her energy fissures the earth beneath her, a testament to her rigorous training and unyielding determination. Known as Karen Henry, she holds the esteemed title of Princess of the Scarlet Sword. She is recognized as the youngest S-rank hunter, and her mastery of fire magic underscores her remarkable abilities. After a tense exchange, Karen takes a deep breath and tucks a stray lock of hair behind her ear. Her calm demeanor suggests that such battles have become routine, however, the underlying tension remains clear. Karen reports that she has successfully dealt with the minor adversaries, but she senses that this confrontation is far from over. Her gaze shifts, ready to face a more powerful threat. The area around her, labeled as an A-rank zone, shows that there are indeed more powerful foes hiding in the shadows, and the situation could very well escalate significantly. In dangerous surroundings, Karen urges her friends to stay alert. Her voice is full of confidence and awareness. She is ready to keep fighting, refusing to let the enemy catch them by surprise. The group of hunters comes together and each person shows strong determination. One person raises his hand happily, saying that they are really ready to continue the fight, energized by their past victories. Hunters, by definition, are people who chase monsters, however, they must always remember one important rule hunting monsters comes with big risks. The young hunter seems really tired and worn out, with a face marked by injuries. He breathes heavily, trying to stay upright his tired look shows the weight of his past experiences. Hunters are reminded that, although they have skills, they are also vulnerable to danger. They must not forget the chance of finding themselves caught in a serious situation where chaos rules. The young hunter stands at a crossroads, clearly hurt, with fear written all over his face. He shakes and asks a question about the destroyed wreckage and remnants of conflict that are all around him. Suddenly, a huge monster comes out of the shadows. Before the hunter stands a huge, dragon-like creature this scene is both scary and amazing. The hunter gasps in shock, trying to understand what this frightening beast really is. Scattered around him are fallen hunters, lying still on the ground, their bodies tired and beaten. Sometimes, hunters become the hunted when they face threats that are too much for them. The hunter is filled with panic as he thinks about the fact that the creature in front of him is not just an ordinary monster he realizes that it's probably an S-ranked being, or maybe even an SS-ranked one, which makes him feel a deep sense of fear. Amidst the rubble, a man lies flat on the ground, his body thin and stained with blood. He mutters, 
it's over showing his complete powerlessness. Even the strong abilities of Karen Himera, the Princess of the Scarlet Sword, have proven not enough. Karen herself is leaning against a wall, tired and hurt, her face showing how serious the battle is. However, she keeps a hint of control. The creature's huge feet are planted firmly on the ground, and the marks around it suggest that it has been defeated, although not completely. A giant figure stands menacingly, casting a long shadow over the battlefield. The creature looms over the hunter, its mouth open in a fierce snarl. In this world, the hunters are on the edge of destruction, ready for annihilation in this intense battle. Karen, however, does not give up. She boldly claims that the fight is far from finished. The monster's eyes glow darkly, showing its strength and anger, because it has no plans to back down. It is clear that it is ready to keep fighting until the end. Holding her flaming sword, Karen gazes down, her hair fluttering in tongues of fire erupting around her. She steals herself for the final confrontation, unwilling to yield even in such dire circumstances. Her determination is palpable, her eyes ablaze with intensity, her expression a reflection of both fury and an indomitable will. She declares her resolve to fight until the very end her sword poised for action. As the colossal monster prepares to strike again, its body taut and ready to lunge. The strength and threat it poses is undeniable. However, Karen does not waver. Despite the pain and exhaustion evident in her contorted face, she refuses to surrender. Although she is weary, her spirit remains resolute. This means Karen is ready to face whatever comes next. Karen realizes that she can't win this battle. Feeling powerless, she begs for help, understanding that she can't fight the monster alone. One of the allies rushes into action, when Karen asks for assistance, the guy's fist is pointed purposefully toward the monster's head. He is ready to make every effort to protect his comrades and stand firm in this conflict. A huge monster falls, knocking over debris from destroyed buildings, which creates a sense of complete uncontrollability regarding the unfolding situation. The girl looks stunned, not fully comprehending what just transpired. Her face is a mix of amazement and fatigue. The giant monster, with a face twisted in pain, wonders what truly happened because the situation is clearly beyond his control. A young man, sitting on the ground with a wounded arm, asks in wonder how it was possible to defeat such a formidable monster with just one blow. The girl stands against the backdrop of the ruined city, gazing at the young man and admiring his abilities, as she realizes that he has vanquished an S-rank monster with a single strike. Karen, however, struggles to believe in the reality of what is happening. The main character thinks about how unlikely the situation is, wondering who this person is, able to perform such incredible acts in the middle of a destroyed city. Three hunters watch each other a man in black, a girl with a flaming sword and a young man sitting on the ground. The young man, wearing a white jacket, can't understand what's happening and, filled with shock and fear, says that this man is the one. With the sunset behind them, the outline of a figure, called the weakest F-rank hunter and a worthless jock, becomes clear. The man smiles and it quickly becomes clear that his name is Kengo Cormia, a man who has surprisingly shown his real abilities. The hero thinks about his own weaknesses, realizing that he was once seen as the most useless jock. A seriousness and focus appear on his face, as if he is remembering his past. He lifts his head, thinking about his earlier weakness, but now he knows that a big change has happened. The hero and the girl look at a ruined skyscraper in the sunset and with a touch of hope, the hero hints at upcoming changes and events. This realization shows how much they can grow, even though there are challenges in front of them. A character with white hair appears, wearing a sly smile his cocky attitude adds both mystery and a possible threat. The hero says that he is no longer the man he used to be, and his eyes are full of determination. He feels sure of his skills. The ruined landscape is in front of Kango, Cormia, and Karen, who are standing together to assess the damage. The atmosphere is full of resolve. Kango Korea, flexing his strong arm, announces his new strength, showing a fresh level of confidence. However, the weight of their situation hangs heavily because the challenges ahead are still tough. Although they are determined, the danger of what is to come can't be overlooked. On the bar, the hero does pull-ups again and again, showing that this difficult exercise is key to his tough workout plan. This specific training session happened three days ago. The hero's back, covered in sweat, shows signs of stress. He finishes the 99th pull-up, determined not to give up even though he feels extremely tired. However, he shouts 100 with a look of strength and unshakable will. After completing the workout and proving himself, the gym equipment stands out in the scene. The atmosphere is calm someone close by just finished a tough workout. A far-off sigh of relief can be heard, probably from being so exhausted. 
The main character, Congo Cormia, holds his stomach. He is wrapping up his workout, and his body shows the results of hard work. Although he feels tired, he is set on continuing. Kango gets ready for the next challenge, the endurance run. He grabs a towel and looks around, giving himself a brief break before pushing his limits again. Kango eagerly sips from his water bottle. He is super thirsty because he wants to restore his vitality. He is evidently parched and the energy he used during training necessitates replenishment, however. The drink tastes really bad, having a strong cocoa flavor. This is a problem for him, but he knows he needs to hydrate. Although he tries to enjoy it, he just can't get past the taste. Kengo shows his unhappiness, however, this doesn't stop him, because every part of the training is important for his dreams. He sprints down the track, determined to break his past records. His only goal is to go beyond all his limits and do better than his peers. Kino's focus sharpens and his determination stays strong. He wants to be stronger than anyone else and he is ready to make any sacrifice to reach it. Two bystanders watch Kango and start talking about him. One person says that he is seen as the weakest among them. This situation shows that Kino's view of others is quite negative. The onlookers keep discussing Kongo, saying he is labeled as a rank F hunter, lacking skills and relying only on raw power. His nickname Musclehead shows his low status in the community. They also mention that Kango has trouble even facing a rank F monster like a goblin. This leaves them both confused and dismissive. Meanwhile, Kengo himself runs on totally unaware of the chatter around him. He is singularly focused on his goal, the Hunter Guild building located in Tokyo. However, this determination makes him miss out on the excitement happening nearby. Although he is dedicated, sometimes it's good to take a moment and enjoy what's around you, but Kengo has no time for that right now. The Shinjuku neighborhood is the main base its presence stands out easily. This big modern building is surrounded by trees and has tall glass windows. A woman with short blonde hair is holding up a hunter's license, showing that it has been checked. The license shows a rank of F, which means the holder doesn't have much status. Kango Koria is standing in front of the receptionist's desk. The woman talking to him goes over his recent achievements and status while she checks his information. The screen in front of her shows a list of missions labeled as rank B and C. She mentions that there are currently no missions for Kango to take on by himself. The woman tells him that he is the only hunter who has stayed at the lowest rank for the last five years, hinting at his not-so-great achievements. The administrator, with a slight sneer, suggests that Kango should join a team instead of working alone, however, she hints that he probably won't succeed on his own. Although the woman goes on, saying that joining a group is an option, it's not clear if he will be accepted at all. Kango's hand can be seen. Clenching his fist, Kango shows tension and resentment at that moment. A stranger with blue hair appears nearby and asks if Kango is looking for a team. He seems interested in talking, and probably has something important to offer. Kango diverts his gaze, his expression full of thoughtfulness and maybe disbelief at what's happening. He is clearly weighing the proposal. The stranger points out that there's a spot on their team, and invites Kango to join them if he wants. Kango Korea suddenly interjects. Who are you at that moment? One of the female employees notices the man with blue hair, thinking that he's quite attractive. A man who introduces himself as Yuma Yuki stands before him. He says that he just moved to Tokyo from the countryside, trying to make a good first impression. Yuma looks closely at Kango and, to Kango's surprise, he suddenly says his name Kango Korea. This revelation makes Kango gasp in shock and ask, Do you know my name? Yuma, smiling confidently, confirms that he really does know Kango. He starts to explain that he's heard of. He calls himself an experienced F-rank hunter who stands out from his peers mainly because he has no unique skills, unlike the other hunters. Yuma continues by saying that Kango has become well-known as a reckless hunter, fighting monsters only with his physical strength without using any powers or magical abilities. Yuma, smiling friendly, says he has heard about Kango's reputation. At that moment, Kango realizes that this man knows more about him than he expected. He admits that every word Yuma said is true. He mentally criticizes himself as useless and without skills, because he doesn't have the abilities that usually enhance other hunters' strength. Kengo thinks about his shortcomings and the lack of special powers, which makes him an oddity among hunters. At this point, he feels completely stripped of power and importance. He remembers the mockery he faced when he first started his journey as a hunter. Many hunters laughed at him for his supposed weaknesses, calling him the weakest. These jibes have cemented Kengo's reputation as the weakest jock, which ultimately leaves him feeling helpless. However, he continues to push forward, determined to prove himself. This is difficult, but he knows he has to keep trying, because giving up is not an option. 
Although it's hard, Kengo believes in his own strength. The hunters surrounding him see him as nothing more than an object for mockery. This attitude comes from his clear inability to compete, however. The atmosphere changes when a giant wolf with glowing blue eyes appears, showing off a talent known as skill. This creature has a strong presence, its aura clearly showing the exceptional power that sets it apart from normal beings. Yuma Yuki stands firm before the wolf, showing confidence in his own abilities. He calls them supernatural power claiming that these powers revitalized humanity in this world after certain events happened. Although the mysterious gate opened and let monsters loose all over the world, it became clear that this gate was the source of all magical and mystical happenings that changed people's daily lives. Because of the gate's arrival, the world was flooded with magic and extraordinary beings. Magical symbols and energies surrounded people, and it was this very phenomenon that allowed skills and abilities, like those shown by Yuma, to come to life. Yuma uses a strong skill called gravitational pressure. The effect of this attack is shown as a force that literally tears the fabric of reality apart. However, many don't understand how powerful it truly is. This skill can change the course of a battle, but it requires great control. Although it seems simple, the energy involved is immense because it manipulates fundamental forces. Yuma shows his superiority over his enemies. He has a power that is so strong it seems to go beyond reality it looks like true magic. This ability creates both fear and awe in those around him, highlighting just how different he is from others. Yuma explains that his skill is in gravity manipulation, and it is through this ability that he can fight and defeat his foes. His confidence and the ability to use such power make him a very dangerous opponent. Yuma demonstrates his strength by destroying everything within his reach. He notices that he can take down his enemies with just one strike, which shows how well he controls his surroundings. However, Yuma quickly finds out that the creature he just defeated was a gar. He thinks about the fact that it had been a pretty strong opponent, but it didn't really challenge him. Although Yuma feels that something is not right, he assumes that this hunting ground has a difficulty rating of D thus, he can't understand why such a powerful monster is here. This revelation makes him question the situation, and he thinks that there may be deeper implications at play. However, he is unsure about how to proceed. This uncertainty is challenging because he wants to understand everything fully. Although he has some ideas, he knows that exploring them will take time, but he feels it's necessary to dig deeper into the matter. Yuma stares at a picture of a two-headed monster, which is known as a boss of difficulty level D, Yuma wonders why boss-level monsters can move through hunting areas meant for lower-ranked hunters. However, he quickly pushes these thoughts aside, saying it doesn't matter. Their mission is still the same, and they have to keep going with their task, no matter what challenges come up. Yuma tells the group that their goal is to defeat the toughest monster in these hunting grounds. If they manage to beat the boss, the gate will close and the danger will be gone. Yuma boldly states that it's their duty as hunters to protect the world from these threats. He shows his confidence and readiness to fight, although the danger is real. Later, one of the group members yells at Kango, calling him a porter in a mocking way. He tells Kango to keep up and join them, which shows how they view him as less important. Kango, weighed down by a huge backpack, replies simply with a yes. He agrees to be a porter, even though the heavy load and the insulting comments are tough to handle. As a group of hunters mocks Kango, claiming that even a small child could defeat him. However, Kengo stands firm, refusing to be intimidated. He knows that true strength comes from within, it's not just about size or skill. The hunters laugh, but Kengo remains focused. Although they underestimate him, he is determined to prove them wrong. This is his chance to show everyone that he is not just a target. He believes in himself, because self-confidence is key in any battle. Jock proves to be quite useful conversations often revolve around his impressive strength with others noting that his physique nearly aligns with the SS rank, eliciting laughter among them. Kengo, however, averts his gaze, absorbing all the remarks in silence. He appears contemplative and somewhat dejected, which serves to highlight his internal conflict. Yuma expresses remorse to Kengo, admitting it was inappropriate to have him don their attire, particularly since he is a hunter as well. He exhibits a degree of sympathy, perhaps because he is becoming aware of the inequities inherent in their dynamic. Kengo responds that everything is perfectly fine and asserts that no one comprehends his abilities better than he does. He harbors no resentment and takes his circumstances for granted, steadfastly adhering to his convictions. Kengo reflects on his physical prowess. He believes that muscles hold little significance when juxtaposed with true skill and are nearly useless in this world dominated by magic. Nevertheless, Kengo acknowledges that strength 
is all he possesses. He understands that as a hunter, engaging in battle with monsters is essential to fulfill his purpose and responsibilities. Kango tightens his fist, he is resolute. He is firmly convinced that his physical strength is the only way he believes he can grow stronger and protect those he holds dear. However, this belief can be limiting, because there are other ways to gain strength. Although he is determined, he should consider different paths to achieve his goals, but he remains focused on what he knows best. Yuma thinks about why Kango is so focused on becoming a hunter, especially considering the many challenges and his clear lack of skill. Yuma's curiosity about what drives Kango is strong. Kango shares his inspiration long ago, monsters brutally killed his family. This terrible event really affected him and is the main reason for his desire to become stronger. Yuma notes that the story of seeking revenge for one's family is a pretty common theme in this world, where monsters are always a threat. He wonders if Kango might be driven by a need for revenge, however, Kango strongly denies that idea. He insists that his goal is not revenge at all. Instead, he just wants to protect others and save as many people as possible from the danger of monsters. This belief pushes him forward on his path as a hunter. Kengo moves to the window, showing his strong determination. He explains that his dream is to save as many lives as he can from the monsters that threaten the world. He insists that even if everyone sees him as the weakest or totally inept, his determination will stay strong. However, this doesn't mean he doesn't feel doubt sometimes. Although he is confident, people can be harsh. But he pushes through because he believes in himself no matter what. Yuma shows his willpower by proving that, although he faces many challenges, he has no intention of giving up. As he watches Kengo, he realizes how deep Kengo's determination runs. I understand, he says simply, acknowledging Kengo's motives without hesitation. This interaction starts a respectful relationship between them. Yuma tells Kengo that he sees him as a kind man, recognizing his determination to help others. Kengo, however, just looks away, leaving this comment unanswered, maybe thinking about his own path. Suddenly a huge monster appears, blood dripping from its claws. The situation looks critical and chaos breaks out around them, making them wonder why all this is happening. A gigantic griffin, rated as a rank of monster, appears in front of the hunters, confusing Yuma. He can't understand why such a powerful creature is in the D-rank hunting grounds, which is a big change from what he expected. Yuma activates his gravitational pressure skill, trying to use it against the griffin he is determined to control the creature. The threat hangs over Yuma as he works hard to protect his friends and get ready for a coming fight with a tough enemy. He urgently tells his companions to run away right now while he bravely holds back the huge foe. Yuma takes charge of the situation, letting the others get away from the danger that's coming. The griffin makes a quick claw strike, showing how strong it is and trying to break free from the magical chains holding it. The creature's anger makes it harder to lessen its attacks. Yuma, however, starts to realize that his strength isn't enough to take down the griffin. He begins to doubt himself, understanding that things are getting out of his control. Fear takes hold of him as he thinks about the chance that he might not be able to handle the threat. He lets out a tense scream as he faces this huge danger. Kango, filled with determination, steps up despite the risks involved. He is ready to charge into battle, although his chances of winning are really low. Yuma decides to rethink his plan after noticing Kango's strong will. He suggests that the group should retreat while Kengo, the holder of courage, keeps the griffin busy, showing a bravery that is becoming rare. This is important. The strength that was once underestimated is now clear Kano's face shows a mix of surprise and confusion. He finds himself in a tough spot that needs complete focus. The sweat shining on his brow shows the real tension he feels. Kengo watches in shock because he has the powerful gravity press ability. He faces a big challenge that needs every bit of power and magic he can use. Kengo sees that magic is being used against him, however, he knows that his main goal is to protect others. His enemy reminds him of his promise to keep people safe at any cost. Yuma, with a creepy grin, daringly pushes him to take the final step by giving up himself for others. The mocking words hit hard, showing that the situation is serious and needs strong determination.